Hey y'all, I'm Juliana and this is Juliana Talks Films, a channel where I explore and examine films and filmmakers so we can learn how to make better films. If you love films and filmmaking, consider subscribing for weekly videos. So last night I finished watching Solar Opposites and I have to say that I thoroughly enjoyed the show. I thought it was very smart, super silly, um, and in my personal opinion, it is definitely a good show to get into, especially during the current climate. There are gonna be some spoilers ahead, so if you haven't yet watched the show and you wanna go into it fresh, please stop this video now and come back to it after you've seen at least part of the show. Um, but my recommendation is until you've watched the full season, don't come back and watch this until then. The show is a new animated series from the creators of Rick and Morty, Mike McMahon and Justin Roiland. The show revolves around an alien family unit who crash onto Earth after their home planet is destroyed by, by a meteor. The unit must now assimilate to Earth life while they try to repair their ship and wait for their doomsday toddler pupa to mature and destroy Earth. My name's Corvo. This is, this is my show. I just dropped the pupa. Do you see me? This, this is ridiculous. I hate Earth. It's a horrible home. And one of these days I'm gonna blow it up and just be done with the whole stupid thing. I swear to God. First and foremost, I know it's very tempting to want to compare Rick and Morty to Solar Opposites, but the show's could not be, well, I don't want to say that, but the shows are definitely very different and they deserve to be treated as their own separate entities, although they do have the same creators and some of the same voiceover talents um, working across them. I personally came into Solar Opposites not expecting it to be like Rick and Morty at all. And in fact, it's um, not even in the same universe as Rick and Morty. It seems like the two shows aren't even going to be doing cameos or crossovers anytime soon. So with that said, there's also some similar qualities that the two shows shared. Like I said, they do have the same show creators, so of course there's gonna be a little bit of overlap and similarities that we're gonna be seeing between the two. The two major things that I saw very similar to the shows was the animation style, of course, it, looks like both do belong in the same world or in similar worlds. Um, we can see like the squiggly-esque pupils in the characters, some of the same animation styles throughout. And then the other thing is that they seem to also share verbatim. There, a lot of the times Corvo, which is one of the main alien characters, and Rick seem to have very similar styles of talking, um, you know, and like their dialogue almost seems to cross over and some of the things that they would even say seem to cross over. They have um, similar personality traits and of course it's no surprise and I think it's also worth, worth mentioning that Justin Royals does the VO, does the voiceover for both Rick Sanchez and uh, Corvo in the two shows. However, I think that's kind of where the similarities start to dissolve. Even though these aliens are coming from you know a far off distant galaxy and seem to be highly intellectually mature at least way more than than humans are they also seem to succumb to uh, very primal human needs and desires which is something that we just don't see in Rick, and if we see it in him, it's very rare and not very often at all. With Corvo, Terry, Yamulak, and Jesse, and the pupa to some extent, um, we are seeing a lot more humanistic traits, um, a lot more similarities to the humans than maybe they would care or want to admit or even realize. A lot of the episodes revolve around these aliens trying to assimilate and trying their best to build some kind of connections with the people around them, um, with the humans around them, and really just trying their hardest to make people love and like and accept them. That typically means that they end up getting themselves into these like crazy antics and almost completely destroying the world which is part of the fun of the show with these aliens again although they are pretty smart and seem a lot more intellectually advanced than humans they still succumb to these like primal human emotions and desires primarily the need and desire to be accepted and wanted and to be able to socialize with other people Twice. Mitchell thinks I'm too loud! I knew it. We're unlikable, aren't we? Is it the sci-fi stuff? Do I smell bad? What is it? Looks like people just generally don't like us. One guy, 
Hey! It's you. Who? This is uh, some dude, Tyler. I don't even know anyone named Tyler. Oh, it feels like I'm covered in bees! Fuck this Tyler guy. We know what Corvo's motivation and intentions are when he's trying to become uh, a magician. You know, he wants to prove that he is worthy he wants to like increase his self-esteem but he also wants people to like and accept him and and um embrace him in some kind of way jesse and yum Yulak also have very similar motives um when they're trying to make friends at school and trying to fit into these you know cool click groups or even just being able to relate to like the nerdier kids. Um, at the end of the day, they just want to have those relationships and feel like they're wanted and um, appreciated and like they belong somewhere. Overall, these characters tend to be a little bit more likable and relatable because we inherently just know what their motives and desires are and why it is they're acting or responding the way that they are. And in addition to having the transparency of the characters' internal motives, uh, the show also just leans very heavily on family sitcom tropes and um, I think we're all just as a culture at least as a cult as a society here in the US I know that we're very much used to watching family sitcoms watching family comedies and so having that added kind of genre-esque um, nature of, of the family sitcom it, it makes it a lot more likable in nature now where the show really shines is its secondary and tertiary tertiary third storylines. I really have to make the argument that the two subplots that are happening in conjunction with the main um, storyline enhance the show so much. There's out, there's actually people out there who have made the argument that the second storyline in particular is a lot more interesting than what's going on in the main in the main storyline. Yumulak has made it a habit to shrink humans down and collect them and uh, put them in this kind of like terrarium-esque wall that they have in their room. Jesse pretty much takes care of them and feeds them candy and like random objects every once in a while and the humans are able to survive um, by harvesting and collecting these like random one-off objects like used floss and um, you know candy to survive off of. But it just gets crazy because of course it ends up becoming its own world. I mean, it's literally this massive terrarium where the population just starts to expand because Yumulak is shrinking all of these people down and collecting them. Um, and it's just its own crazy post-apocalyptic world where this whole like social stratum starts to become its own thing and, and people are just trying to survive. Particularly episode seven delves very deeply into that storyline and really leaves us with a massive cliffhanger that I am super excited to continue to explore in season two. But the other storyline that they get into is that of the pupa. In a lot of the episodes as well, they're exploring just like deeper aspects of the pupa. So he's kind of just going off and having his own adventures out in the world. And we actually get to see that behind this like cute toddler Esque, like kind of stupid persona that he's portraying to the family unit he's actually this like very menacing and almost maniacal highly intelligent little being that um, is definitely destined to fuck shit up really excited to see how they continue to develop that character and see what exactly happens especially in that last episode of Solar Opposites we get a little bit of a taste of what's to come as he may maybe might be starting to evolve into um, his final form so yeah I also just want to mention that the last episode of season one was very very reminiscent of a season two episode of Rick and Morty called Total Rickall and again I know that they're their own separate shows but I think it's just worth noting the similarities of that show just to refresh your memory Total Rickall is about this alien parasite that ends up infesting the Smith's house and almost consuming everybody's thoughts and they just start to reproduce and all of these like crazy zany characters start to come to life and, and take over their memories 
and everyone genuinely thinks that these um, characters and people are real and a part of their lives but in reality they are just this alien parasite that's trying to take over the world. In the season finale of Solar Opposites without spoiling too much we kind of get very similar aspects of that where at the end of the episode we find out that all of this is not real and they've just been in their spaceship simulator this entire time. The incorporation of the spaceship simulator is I feel like a very classic staple in modern sci-fi now, um, modern space sci-fis. So the fact that they incorporated that into one of the episodes this season uh, I thought was just really rounded out the whole episode. In my personal and humble opinion I genuinely enjoyed the show and I know that not everybody is going to like it and not everyone is going to be able to say separate it from its sibling Rick and Morty, but I do think it's worth checking it out. The show is really smart, there's a lot of social commentary in there, and it's structured in a very intellectual way, but it's also zany and silly and pretty raunchy as well, which really just adds to the whole nature of this world and the situation that these characters find themselves in. I say if you're a fan of Invader Zim, but also appreciate the raunchiness of Big Mouth, then you'll probably like this show. Have you guys seen Solar Opposites yet? And if so, what did you like and dislike about the show? Did you see any other similarities with Rick and Morty? Or do you just want to treat it as its own separate show as well? Leave me a comment below and let me know. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. All right, everyone, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.